what are, what are your thoughts about using nonprofits like this to cancel the student? I'm sorry, student <laughs> medical debt. That's, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> maybe, maybe just maybe somebody could do something like that, you know. But <laughs> but what are your thoughts? Because it feels like a step in the right direction, but it feels like a band aid on a on a on a big wound. You know what I mean? It's exactly what it is. You know what I'm feeling? That's totally what it is. It's it's trying to use. It's trying to use like. Um, you know, the state for something that should be a federal issue. You know, there's, there's, there's limits. States have states, governments have budgets. You're working with the, um, the rescue plan. There's a limit to how much you can get. Whereas if you did this on a national level, you could do it nation. You could do it, you know, for everyone. It's good. I'm glad it's happening, but there should be more. Shout out, first of all, to More Perfect Union. More Perfect Union does some great work on the ground. They do some great reporting. I appreciate you guys for what you do. And so we're going to get into this. So there is the governor of, there's the governor of Connecticut that has done something really good. Now, as you know, I am post-duopoly. I do not subscribe to the Democrats. I do not subscribe to the Republicans. I am an independent. Uh, I believe in third parties and independents. But when somebody does something good, I gotta call it out. I gotta say they did good on this one, right? I gotta be fair, right? So let's go here. So it says Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont says he his state will purchase one billion dollars of residents' medical debt for just six point five million. Then he will cancel it all, abolishing medical debt for two hundred fifty thousand people. This is the first time a state has forgiven medical debt at a massive scale. Let's get into it, Gaijin. Mm. Some good news. Baby. That is Ready? that is good news. That's All right. Good. I wish it was national, but good news. Good news. Why you're canceling medical debt now? This is not something they did because they were spending too much money. This is something because they got hit with a medical emergency. They should not have to, uh, you know suffer twice, first with the illness, then with the debt. Medical debt is the number one source of debt collection in the U.S., greater than credit card parts, utilities, auto loans, and other sources combined. Did you guys know that? I didn't. 500,000 plus people go bankrupt from medical debt every year. Yeah, I got medical debt. <laughs> you best believe. Easy. All right, let's continue. Almost 20% of American households carry medical debt, disproportionately impacting Black and Latino families. The state anticipating 250,000 residents will see their medical debt cleared. Lamont announcing he's leveraging a $6.5 million fund from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 to cancel $1 billion in medical debt by working with a nonprofit organization that buys and eliminates debt at a fraction of the cost so when we're talking about something like this this is a great use of federal funds yes i'm not mad at it <laughs> it's a win-win of course like like if you're going to use money from the american rescue plan i say then all right cool I'm I'm good with that. Um, I do have some critiques, but you know, for the most part, this is something that they're that they're good with. Now let let's continue, and then I'll give some of my thoughts. 
I think it's really important that people have a sense that they can start building wealth of their own for making that easier for people to do. And the best way to start is eliminate the debt you got. Eligible families include those whose medical debt equates to 5% or more of their annual income or whose household income is up to 400% of the federal poverty line. For now, here's my critiques. Means to be all positive, but I, I just got to say. Did I? Okay, I forgot the. Huh. Anyways, um, so the income. You guys, you guys yeah. heard that, right? Yeah. Well, the, it's okay. the fact that they have a they have a ceiling on it that it's means. Yeah. Set. So basically, here's that's part of my critique. So now, while this is good overall, I honestly do not like means testing programs because in reality nobody should have medical debt in this country this also makes it easier for others particularly a lot of conservatives to demonize and repeal this action because others at a higher income other people who might be at a higher income but who just fall out of eligibility will not be able to benefit from this and still suffer now it's a step in the right direction but this also makes the case for a nationalized healthcare system, in my opinion. So, one hundred percent. Your thoughts? Totally agree. Um, it's uh, also it creates that uh, system with with like if you fall over that bracket, and you're like, oh well, I didn't get my debt cleared. That person got their debt cleared. So that gives, that creates the wedge where you can politically say, oh, this isn't fair. This is, we got to get rid of it. Universal is universal. And that's true of, uh, at least theoretically, anything else that's universal. You know, it's not like you can't go to the library if you're over a certain income bracket. You can't go to the fire department if you're over a certain in income bracket. You have it all together so everybody's in the same team mm -hmm. otherwise you're playing mm -hmm. people against each other plus mm -hmm. also it's state so you have the issue of federal i mean not to go into everything about mmt and and that sort of thing but federal they don't have the same restrictions on spending that states do so it's really better that it be nationwide otherwise I 100% agree with you. I don't care who, yeah, I don't care if it's a Democrat. I don't care if it was a Republican who put this forward. You got to applaud the effort. Yeah, definitely. Let's continue. For a family of four, that's $156,000 a year. This is really welcome news to so many families in Connecticut. There's no application process for those who want to participate in Connecticut. It's automatic. And in cities like Chicago and D.C. who have canceled debt, the amount per household has ranged, guys, from $25 to six-figure amounts. Guys. So that is what's going on. This actually goes over the what they're doing to cancel medical debt. I did talk about canceling medical debt from um, from groups before, but I would like to go over this as well a little bit so we can talk about it. But I do have my thoughts as well regarding this. Uh, let's just get into it. Medical debt is the number one reason why people go into bankruptcy in the United States. A growing crisis of medical debt in America. 100 million people are saddled with health care debt in America. That's larger than the economy of Greece. Almost anyone can end up in medical debt. You can have insurance and you can end up in medical debt. You can get sick and be brought to a hospital that's outside of your network and you can end up in medical debt. Being a leader in government is a tremendous opportunity to address, you know, historic wrongs. We can prevent someone from getting evicted because they had medical debt from choosing between paying their medical bills or putting food on the table. And it's incumbent upon those of us in leadership 
the positions to use this money wisely, to invest it wisely. And uh, I, I'm very proud of the fact that we're leaders in the elimination of medical debt. My name is Tony Prackwinkle. I'm president of the Cook County Board of Commissioners, which means I'm county executive for Cook County. Ways we were going to use our American Rescue Plan Act resources and in this work. We are a charitable nonprofit institution that's mission is to end medical debt. We were founded by two former debt buyers who knew the debt industry and knew that you could buy debt for pennies on the dollar, which is why one dollar relieves over a hundred dollars of medical debt. And we've gotten rid of over seven billion dollars of debt for over four million people to date. Okay, so the question is who's eligible? We look for people that are 400% of poverty or below, or if the debt is 5% or more of the person's income. We're going to spend $12 million. That's our initial investment. $12 million over three years that they're using to get rid of roughly $1 billion of medical debt. That is a leverage that most social programs can't provide. That is why so many local governments are knocking on our door. We've gotten inquiries from around the country, New Orleans, Louisiana, Los Angeles County, Columbus, Ohio, Toledo, Ohio. Cook County was the first municipality that used American Rescue Plan dollars. We followed that model to allocate $800,000 and then the Lucas County commissioners are matching $800,000 for a total of $1.6 million. We can potentially get up to $240 million of medical debt off the backs of local Toledoans with a $1.6 million investment. So what are, you, what are your thoughts about using nonprofits like this to cancel the student, I'm sorry, student, <laughs> medical debt. That's, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> Freudian slip, maybe, <laughs> maybe just maybe somebody could do something like that, you know? But, <laughs> but what are your thoughts? Because it feels like a step in the right direction, but it feels like a Band-Aid on a, on, a, on a big wound. You know what I mean? It's exactly what it is. You know what I'm feeling? That's totally what it is. It's, it's trying to use... It's trying to use, like, um, you know, the state for something that should be a federal issue. You know, there's, there's, there's limits. States have states... Governments have budgets. You're working with the um, the rescue plan. There's a limit to how much you can get. Whereas if you did this on a national level, you could do it nation. You could do it, you know, for everyone. It's good. I'm glad it's happening, but there should be more. But yeah. what are your thoughts? Um, it's so. One of the things that I was thinking about in regards to this, now, here's a variable I don't think that many people think of. You probably thought about it, but I, but many people, it just didn't cross them at this point. While paying off the medical debt is good, why should we have the debt in the first place? The, that goes These debt that. holders, yeah. These debt holders are happy that the government pays it off because now they're getting it straight from the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So I say get rid of the middleman entirely and give healthcare as a human right. Oh, well, no need to pay wall healthcare. Yeah, I mean it's it's everything feeds into everything else. I was uh, one when I was listening to this, I was thinking about the fact that. One of the insidious factors in medical debt is so you're working, you're, you've worked all your life, believe me, actually, I know, um, and then you get hit with a, a serious medical condition. Suddenly you can't work, you don't have the income coming in, you don't have the insurance. That's how you get racked up, the, the medical bills start to rack up. Maybe you have some savings at first where you can buy some insurance. You lose that really quick. So the fact that we don't have universal health care is what causes this kind of debt to begin with. And the fact 
that since there is no universal health care plan, there's no negotiation of prices. So the prices are inflated. Yep, absolutely. There really is no need to paywall health care. No. When you get rid of that paywall, then you won't have to cancel any debt at all and your citizens can lead healthier lives. Mm -hmm. Now also think about the mental health burden that this lifts. Imagine not having this weight on your shoulders in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, uh, by the way, also, and let's get back to that too. Sorry to cut you off. Um, also think uh, if you wanna like uh, cater to the capitalists and the conservatives, all the money that is going into paying this medical debt is not going to other goods and services. So if you have universal health care, that stimulates the rest of the economy because people have more money to spend. Yep. Yep. And the thing is, is like paying these holders of debt, like, yeah. So the debt was sold to them on pennies on a dollar, right? Mm -hmm. Now they're holding your, let's say you have $100,000 in medical debt and they're holding that and they bought the debt for a thousand dollars. Yeah. And they're trying to get like $30,000 you know, they're trying to settle for 30000 right? Even though it only cost them $1,000 for it. The thing is, is that let's say even if we just paid them $2,000 to, you know, to kick rocks, <laughs> I was they gonna paid even... a whole bunch of money off the taxpayers in the first place. Like, these companies should not exist yeah, they should in be. the first place. That's why I say it's a step in the right direction, but they shouldn't, we shouldn't even have to give it to them. We shouldn't, I, I would say pay it, pay it off just so you could, you don't have any um, grudges Yeah, and it's not something that they can weaponize. Oh my God, look what you did to me. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's my take thing. Away the yeah. And then take away the situation that caused this. Exactly. Like, like take that money that you would otherwise give to Ukraine and Israel, pay off everybody's medical debt, and then get rid of having medical debt, period. <laughs> Basically. Exactly. Take some of that money that you would use for the military industrial complex and pay off everybody's medical debt. Mm -hmm. And, and give mean, people homes. <laughs> but that sounds like take, a good deal. And, and take care of uh, homelessness, too, but yeah, that's another topic. <laughs> Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Make sure that nobody's homeless. Yeah. Because that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other deal that a lot of people don't want to talk about because people think that you are homeless. It is your own damn fault. When in reality, it is not a individual issue. It's a systemic issue and requires systemic solutions. Yes. It's also but not to whole <laughs> Also, right, it's not to health. <laughs> it's not. It's not. And that's another thing that we should be talking about is how homelessness is bad for our health. Yeah. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JBFON. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.